Well, welcome everybody to Reach and Read. My name is Katie and I work at the Sacramento Public Library where books are just the beginning. We're so happy to have you here and to have local yoga instructor Kat Sun with us today and we'll get to her in just a moment. But first I wanted to mention a few things. So first is just some housekeeping. So this is being done in a webinar format. So that means that all participant microphones and video have been disabled. So if you have a question or a comment, you can feel free to use the Q&A function that you'll find at the bottom of your screen and either myself or Kat will get back to you. If you're having any audio related issues, please exit the program and re-enter. We find that doing that will typically solve that issue. If you need closed captioning at any point during the program, please click the live transcript button that you'll find at the bottom of your screen. You'll click that button, wait just a moment, and then you'll see the closed captioning pop up and you can follow along. And also this program is being recorded and will be shared to the virtual yoga playlist on our YouTube channel. And in case you haven't visited it before, you can find our YouTube channel under Sacramento Public Library. And make sure to stick around after the yoga demonstration for a short book talk based on this week's theme. And I will mention this because we're getting to the end of this particular session of Reach and Read. So I do send out an email uh, survey to all registrants. Um, so please feel free to share your thoughts and feedback with us. And I will make sure to share a link to the next session of Reach and Read. Um, so just keep an eye out for that email. It'll be coming shortly. All right, and I'm just going to mention a few health resources that we have available at the Sacramento Public Library. So I wanted to share that we will have a virtual journaling for mental health program on June 29th at four o'clock. So of course, if you're into mindfulness, art journaling practices, meditation, that's a really great one to come to. And it's nice that it's virtual. You can do it from home. We also have a virtual Zumba program on Mondays at 530 and virtual Zumba Gold on Wednesdays at four. And Zumba Gold is great for beginners and older adults to join. So if you'd like to get in some exercise, those are great programs to come to. And you can check out a book about the benefits of exercise, mindfulness, and yoga from the library collection. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you and turn things over to Kat. So Kat, take it away and everyone please enjoy. Great. Thank you so much, Katie. And good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, or Thursday, <laughs> sorry, happy Thursday. Thanks for being here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So as usual, I'm offering this from home. And so if you hear any sort of extraneous noises, you know, I have my father, my dogs, my neighbors, so you might hear some sounds, just let it flow by, okay? And then as always, uh, if you have any yoga props on hand at home, uh, please gather them, so a yoga mat, I like to always have a blanket, a couple of blocks, and a strap. And you can always use like big, thick um, beach towels or, um, you know, belts or anything else that kind of help to um, ex uh, facilitate these kinds of things. They don't have to be actual yoga props if you don't have them at home. Okay, and so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So as some of you know, we are uh, currently in a five-week series covering the five elements. We're working from the most dense to the most subtle. So, so far we've, uh, we've touched earth, water, fire, and this week we will be focusing on the element of air. <clears throat> so air, <clears throat> excuse me, air uh, is related to the, four, if you, um, know the standard seven chakra system that's popular in the west air is uh, related to the fourth chakra at the heart center um, and so this is the center that kind of is the intermediary between the three lower chakras and the three higher chakras <clears throat> and so they say it's kind of where both the heaven and earth energy come together and um, <clears throat> swirl in the heart and <clears throat> Excuse me. Each element also has a, a beach sound, um, a beach mantra, a seed sound. And so earth was lum, and then water was vum, uh, fire was rum. And this week at the heart, it's the sound is yum. Okay. So kind of like yum. <laughs> mm, yum. Okay. So very fitting at the heart. <clears throat> and so today, since we're working with the heart, we will be focusing a bit more on our breath. 
uh, sorry, what did I say? Since we're focusing on the air element, we'll be focusing a little bit more on our breath. And we'll also be doing some work at the heart center, through the arms, the shoulders, the arms, the hands, the wrists, maybe even a little bit through the neck. Okay, so that's kind of going to be our focus today. And we'll do a gentle practice as usual, some, some gentle uh, stretching and movement. And then I'm hoping to have enough time to do just a little bit of uh, alternate nostril breathing at the end before we come into Shavasana. But it's kind of a condensed class, so we'll see what we can get to. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. As always, we're going to start on our backs. I like to have a pillow or a folded blanket for a pillow under my head. And then... Um, and that's always good just to have your other things nearby within reach. So let's start on our backs and I'll meet you there. <clears throat> so as you arrive onto your back, go ahead and just take a position that's comfortable for you. Your legs can be stretched out if that's okay for your back. If it's too much pressure for the low back, then bending the knees, planting your feet on the floor. Maybe have your feet a little wider apart so the knees can knock in and support each other is a really nice alternative. You can have your hands. Uh, let's go ahead and start with our hands on our body today. So maybe hands on the low belly or one belly, one hand on the belly, one hand on the uh, diaphragm, whatever's comfortable for you to start. And as you arrive, just Allow yourself to arrive. So let's take a nice deep breath in through the nose <clears throat> and clear it out through your mouth. And again, inhaling in through the nose. And make some sound. <sighs> again, inhale. <sighs> and then with your lips lightly closed, Let's tune in. So always we take the first few moments to, to just tune in, to arrive, and just to scan the body, the physical body, and notice what's, if anything is speaking to you in your physical body, if there's any part of the body that's calling for some extra attention or love. And then beginning to tune into your breath body, just noticing the breath as it moves in and out. And now as you breathe in and out, feel your hands, feel the belly expanding underneath your hands as you inhale. And as you exhale, feel the belly sink back down towards the earth as you exhale. So just a few cycles, really starting to tune in to that expansion and contraction of your breath. As you breathe in, feel the air move across the space from the top of the lip to the nostrils up through the nostrils, and then filling up your lungs, the diaphragm pressing down as the lungs fill, causing the belly to expand out. As you exhale, feel as the air moves out through the nasal passages, through the nostrils, maybe the air is a little warmer, a little more moist as it moves across the space between the nostrils and the upper lip. And as you exhale, the air moves out of the lungs, allowing the diaphragm to move back up into the rib basket, allowing the belly to hollow back towards the spine. So just riding the wave of your breath. A couple more cycles, nice and easy. And here you might just wanna also take a moment to just soften your mouth, wiggle out your jaw, let your tongue be soft, start to soften the muscles of the face, relax around your eyes. Focusing on your breath. If the mind starts to wander onto other things, you just, when you realize it, just gently bring it back onto the breath, right? Just like you would a child that's kind of wandering off, you gently bring it back. Just rising, observing the rising of the inhale and the falling of the exhale. Observing that expansion and contraction. And you'll notice just by bringing your awareness onto your breath, without even any attempt to change your breath, your breath will naturally begin to shift. Maybe it's becoming a little more fluid, more rhythmic, whatever it is, You're just observing. And then we are going to start to bring some um, attention to shifting our breath. So 
We're going to work first with the equal length of inhalation to exhalation. And then eventually, slowly, slowly, we will begin to elongate the exhale. So when you're ready, you're going to start to count to your inhale. And you're going to count to whatever is your rhythm. So I'm going to use the example of four. So if you're inhaling, maybe you inhale to the count of four. There's a slight pause at the top of the inhale. And then as you exhale, just exhale to about the same count. Again, without forcing. So if it doesn't happen right away, it's okay. You're just working towards equal length of inhalation and exhalation. And you're just allowing that to happen. So at any point when we're working with the breath, if you feel yourself beginning to grip or to clench or to um, uh, sort of power through it, that's a sign to back off. You know? So it definitely is counterproductive to what we're doing when we harden and we strain in working with the breath here, at least in this, this breath work we're doing here. Okay, so as you start to acclimate to even inhalation and exhalation, when you're ready, the next round of breath, it's the same count with the inhale, a slight pause, and then when you exhale, maybe you can add a count. So if you're working with the count of four on the inhale, maybe you can exhale to the count of five. Bottom of the exhale, there's a slight pause as the breath flips. And then again, inhaling to your count, pausing at the top, and exhaling. So again, I'm using the example of inhaling to four, exhaling to five. But use what works for your breath or your cycle. A few cycles like that just to acclimate to that slightly longer exhalation. And once your body acclimates to that, again, with your next round of breath, if you're ready, you can add another count to the exhale. So again, you're inhaling to four, let's say. And then if you're ready, you can exhale to the count of six. So slowly, slowly, nice and gentle, we begin to elongate the exhalation in relation to the inhalation. Always give yourself time to acclimate before adding on. So keeping the nervous system nice and relaxed. Again, once you acclimate, if you're working with a count of four on the inhale, if you feel ready, the next time you exhale, maybe you can exhale to the count of seven. If you're working to a different count, then you're working with whatever count you're working with. Good. And then again, once you've adjusted, Maybe you can add another count. So eventually, if it's available, you're going to begin to breathe where your exhalation is about twice the length of the inhale. But again, you're working with what's available this morning within your body, right? So stay true to what's appropriate for you. Main thing is to keep your nervous system soft, keep the body relaxed, keep the lungs relaxed. So no forcing, no efforting. Whatever, wherever you're at, just take a few more rounds, nice and easy. Good, and then take your time, complete the round that you're on. And once you've completed that round, just come back to a natural breath. Just your natural breath now, so no attempt to manipulate the breath anymore. But again, just observe the breath now. Notice how the breath might have shifted from just a few moments of working with your breath. And also notice any shifts in your inner state. Maybe things are a little more quiet within. Maybe it feels a little more spacious. Whatever it is, just observe. That's just from a few moments of working with your breath. So just remembering that our breath is always with us. No matter where we are, what we're doing, the breath is there. 
So most of the time we're breathing unconsciously and then we're allowing our emotions to affect the quality of our breath. But when we bring conscious awareness onto the breath, the breath can then begin to shift the inner state. So working in the opposite direction by, uh, by shifting our breath, we can shift our inner state. Okay? So it's such a powerful ally to have with us at all times. All right. So from here, let's go ahead. We're going to stretch our arms out open to the sides, palms up. If your legs are straight, go ahead and bend your knees and walk your feet nice and wide apart. So we'll start with our usual nice gentle movement to just begin to warm up the body. Take a nice inhale in through neutral. And as you exhale, spin your head to the right and keep your left shoulder, left arm, left hand heavy. So back of the hand is on the floor, back of the arms on the floor. That left arm stays grounded as you keep spinning your head right, keep reaching your left hand away from you. And breathe into that sensation down the length of the left chest, left arm, left palm. Inhale, we bring it up through neutral. And exhale, we're going to switch other side. Head spins left, right arm stays heavy. Keep the back of the arm, back of the hand grounded as you keep reaching the right hand away. Keep spinning your head to the left. And again, back to neutral. Exhaling, head to the right, knees to the left. So starting to oscillate now. Inhale through center. Exhaling, head left, knees right. So just a gentle twist now through the body in the supine posture. So nice and easy, windshield wiping our knees side to side, and the head is moving in the opposite direction. And just take a few moments here. Enjoy this movement. You're playing with your edge. You know, what's your range here? Okay, and then back to center we come. Let's take our arms up to the sky. We bend those elbows and we clasp the elbows. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, your head spins to the right again and slide your elbows left. And again, pause here. Keep sliding your elbows left, keep taking your head towards the right, and breathe into what's here. Maybe you feel a pressure going across your right chest as that right arm crosses to the left. Maybe you feel a bit of a stretch between your right shoulder blade and the spine, or maybe for you it's somewhere else. As you inhale, bring it up to center, and exhale, switching sides, head to the left, elbows slide right, and again, pause and breathe. Notice what's here on the second side. Breathe into what you find. Inhale, bring it back up to center. Switch the forearm clasp, so other forearm stacks on top. And then we're going to start to oscillate. So take a breath in. As you exhale, head and knees rock to the right, elbows slide left. So now the head and the knees are moving in the same direction, elbows opposite. Inhale through center. Exhaling, head and knees to the left, elbows slide right. So again, nice and slow, keep it gentle, sliding and gliding with your breath. Just breathing into the sensations that are presenting themselves, feeling. As we slow things down, we allow ourselves to feel more in order to integrate more. Most of the time in our outer lives, we can be rushing around, multitasking, one thing after another. So our practice here becomes a place where we can slow it down and just focus on this present moment, being present with what is showing up within our bodies, being present to listen to what the body is communicating with us. Okay, and then back to neutral here. From here, let's go ahead, and this morning we're going to roll over to one side. So let's roll to our right side with our knees bent. So bring your knees in line with the hip, not down here, not up here, but just out from, from the, uh, right out from the hip. Now, for some, you might want to have something to hug between, so you can have a block between your knees, or you can even have um, another blanket or some pillows. I'll demo it with a folded blanket. You can have like folded blankets between your uh, knees to, to ankles, or you know something so that it's more comfortable. You've got a pillow underneath your head, and then your right arm is stretched out straight out from the shoulders on the floor in front of you. We're gonna take the left hand on top of the right. Oh, let's actually just take the left shoulder, left hand onto the left shoulder. And we're just gonna make some circles with that left elbow in the air. 
So just point your elbows towards the front, point it up towards the top of the mat, and then back behind you, and then down towards the bottom of the mat. So like that, we're circling that elbow in the air, getting some movement through the shoulders. You can make that circle as small or as big as is appropriate in your body. Just bringing some movement and make sure you're still breathing here. Okay. So now, if it's better for you to keep your hand on your shoulder, you can stay with this. Otherwise, if it's okay for your shoulders, we're going to bring the left hand on top of the right hand. And we're going to still make circles, but now we're going to use the hand. You're going to trace the finger along the floor as much as you can. So we're going to start to take that left hand, fingertips on the floor, slight, circle it up towards the top of the mat, open it out behind you, and then down by the hips, and then back forward again. So you're just doing your best to keep your hands caressing the floor. It will lift, but you know, you're just doing your best to kind of trace the floor as you circle the arms. And again, you're breathing. So maybe you're inhaling as you open up. And then you're exhaling as you come back forward. Okay, so maybe a couple more. Feel that movement through that left shoulder as you open your left chest. And then the next time your left arm opens up to the left, we're going to pause with our arms open here. So now broaden through the hands. Reach the hands away from each other as you spin your head to look up to the sky. Your navel now is spinning towards the left hand behind you. And just take a breath here. All right. And then if it's okay for your head, you can even look at your left hand behind you, keeping your right hand heavy. Bring your gaze back to neutral if you spun your head. And now take your left hand down by the hips and bring it back forward. From here, left hand on top of the right hand again. Now you're going to slide your left hand away from you. And as this, you're going to turn to kiss the floor. So you're turning your head to the floor. Your, your chest is facing the floor. You slide the left hand away. And then as you inhale, slide that left hand across the right hand, across the right arm, across your chest, and open your left arm out to the left again. As you uh, exhale, sweep that hand up towards the sky and close the book. Again, slide the hand away, kiss the earth. As you inhale, start to slide the left hand along the inside of the right arm across your chest and open it up to the left. Exhaling, closing the book. Let's just do one more of those. Inhale, open. And exhaling, close. Good. This time, inhale, open it up again and pause. Again, we've been here before. So spreading the hands away from each other, broaden through your collarbones, gaze is straight up. Navel is spinning towards the left hand behind you as the knees are spinning to the right. Take a breath here in this twist, broaden through the chest. Good. And then when you're ready, let's actually spin our head now to look to the right hand. So same direction as the knee. And your left hand behind you, you're going to open and close that left hand a few times. So open and close the left hand. And the next time you make a fist with that left hand behind you, circle that left wrist. And circle it the other way. And then make a big palm again and press the wall away from you. So the back of the hand is facing the back of the skull as you press your palm away from you. Breathing here. And then spin the palm up towards the sky. Shift your gaze back up to neutral. And take a breath in here. Broaden through the collarbones. As you exhale, take that left hand. Brush it through the dome of the sky to close the book again. All right. And... From here, we're just going to switch sides. So go ahead and spin yourself around onto the other side. So now left side of the body is on the floor. Again, if you've got something between your uh, lower leg, you're going to take it. Especially if this, uh, you know, you can always stack it more height for more height if you need more distance. Uh, and then... Your left hand is on the floor in front of you, straight out from the shoulders. Again, bring your knees to about hip height, so 90 degrees, torso to thighs. And then let's start with the right hand on our right shoulder. And we're just going to make some circles. So again, the direction of the circle, it goes forward, 
up, back, and then down. So that's the direction, forward, up, back, and down. So when I say forward, it's to the same direction you're facing, up is towards the head, back is behind you, and down is towards the bottom of the mat. So just circling your elbow, as small or as big of a circle as it works for you, making sure you're breathing. Okay, so you can keep it like this, or if it's okay for your shoulders, we're going to go ahead and bring the right hand on top of the left hand. And then we're going to, again, keep the fingertips trailing along the floor as best we can as we circle the arm. It starts forward, it moves towards the top of the mat, it moves back behind us, and then down towards the hips. So like that, a few big sho shoulder circles here with that right arm. Making sure, again, you're breathing. So again, maybe you're inhaling as you open back, and then you're exhaling as you come back forward. And then the next time you open wide, again, let's pause here. So once you pause, imagine you're broadening the, the collarbones away from each other. You're reaching the hands away from each other. Your gaze is up towards the sky. Your belly button is spinning towards the back hand as your knees are spinning. As your knees are spinning left, your belly button spinning right. So there's a counter rotation through the torso here, creating the twist. And just breathe here. And if it's okay, you can look back at that right hand behind you. Okay, and take a nice big breath in as you bring your gaze back up to neutral. And then as you exhale, go ahead and bring that hand down and forward. And then from here, right hand stacks on top of the left. You're going to start to slide the right hand away from you as you turn your torso to kiss the earth. And then inhaling, slide that right hand across the inseam of the left hand, left arm, across your chest, and open the right arm back behind you. As you exhale, sweep the dome of the sky, close the book, slide the hand away, kiss the earth, inhale, opening it out. Exhale, close. Let's just do one more like that. open, exhale, sweep the sky, close the book, and this time inhale, we're going to pause again with the arms open, palms reaching away from each other, so again, broaden through the collarbones, as your knee spins left, your navel spinning right, breathe here. And then we're going to turn our gaze now to look at the left hand, same direction as the knee. So head is oriented, same direction as the knees. And your right hand behind you, you're going to open and close that right hand a few times. So make a fist and then open a big broad palm, open and close. Next time you make a fist, let's circle that wrist. And then we'll circle it the other way. And then make a big palm again and press the wall away from you. So back of the hand is facing the back of the skull as the palm presses away from you. Breathe into that. Breathe into that stretch along the right chest, down the length of the arm. Maybe you can even feel it in your armpit. Down the length of the arm into the hands. And then spin your palm to face up, back of the hand, back on the floor, like you're holding a platter. <clears throat> Take a breath in and out. With your next inhale, spin your gaze up to neutral. And as you exhale, sweep your hand through the sky and again, closing the book. Okay. And from here, we're going to roll over, coming up onto a seated position. So I like to sit up on a little lift. You can sit up on some cushions or maybe a folded blanket or two or maybe some blocks. So get a little bit of height underneath your sit bones that helps us to arch our low back in so that we can ground into the front of the sit bones and stack our spine nice and tall over the sit bones and let's just take some big shoulder circles here so shrug your shoulders forward up back and down like that forward up back and down let's do one more 
and then next time your shoulders go back and down, keep your shoulder blades now sliding down the back body. Imagine your buttock flesh is sliding down into the earth too. And then in the front body, gently hug your navel in and up slightly, broadening your navel towards the back, the body. Let your collarbones broaden, heart is buoyant, but to counter overarching, broaden into your back kidney band area. So the mid torso, mid back area. Imagine you're expanding from the spine out. And then lengthen the back of the neck, back of the skull, straight up towards the sky. As you feel the sides of the throat slide back and up slightly. Just take a moment now seated nice and tall, grounding into earth and lengthening up into sky. Take a breath. From here, we're going to inhale, sweep our arms out and up overhead. As we exhale, let's bring the palms together in front of the heart. Let your thumbs gently press against your sternum, shoulder blades down the back. And pause here and just connect into this heart center here. Some say that this is the seat of the soul. So just tuning in to how you feel in this space right here, right now. And if you like, you can practice that. Uh, seed sound of the center of earth of air, yum. So it's yum, 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 yum. Good. If you'd like to offer a dedication or set an intention, now's the time as well as you tune into the heart center here. One more beat, breathing in. And then we'll gently bow our head to the heart as we release the hands. Again, inhale, sweep your arms out and up. And now we're going to go ahead and exhale. We'll bring our left fingertips down. Keep your right arm lifted. Ground down through your right sit bone. Lengthen up through the right arm. And we're going to just gently tilt to the left. Stay rooted in the left sit bone as you tilt to the left. So from the grounding through that right sit bone, I'm sorry, from the grounding of the right sit bone, you can reach your right arm but keep the shoulder blade down the back. Inhale, bring it up through center. And exhale, other side. So right fingertips come down onto the earth. Ground down through the left sit bone, reaching up with the left arm. But get that shoulder blade down the back. And then again, stay grounded as you exhale and tip it to the right. So again, from the rootedness of that grounded sit bone, that's what gives you the, the uh, resistance to then reach and lengthen through that side seam. So imagine you're fanning open those ribs. Good. Inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, bring those left fingertips down again. This time we're going to bring, bend our right elbow and bring our hand to the outside, the left side of the head. And we're just going to gently tilt our head now to the right as we walk our left fingertips away. So now, in your, if this does not work for you to have the hand on the head, you don't need to have the right hand on the head. You can just have your right hand on the right thigh. And just tilt your head to the right and walk your left fingertip away. That works just as well. So, whichever variation you're in, breathe and feel that length, that breath from the ear down the side of the neck, cross down the shoulders, down the length of the arm, into the fingertips, into the ear. And then from here, you're going to take that left hand and just bring the back of the hand against your sacrum at the base of the low, uh, low spine there, right above your butt crease, base of the spine, there's that triangular bone called the sacrum. So just press the back of the hand into the sacral area and breathing here. Now you can keep it just like that, or if you have the range, you can start to slide that left hand to the right, like you wanna hook your right hand into your front right pocket or maybe the back right pocket. So that brings your elbow a little bit closer in towards the torso. And breathe here. Finally, if your elbow is in against the torso and it's available, you can start to slide that back hand up towards the spine. And just breathing. And then we're going to gently begin to release the left hand, bring the fingertips out again, walk the fingertips away. And then bring your right hand just to the right side of your face and help your head up. And then hands on your thighs. Let's just take a big shoulder circle. And then inhale, sweep your arms out and up again. 
Keep your left hand lifted, bring your right fingertips down. Walk your right fingertips away. Nice long line through that left, that right arm. We're going to bend the left elbow as we gently tilt our head to the left. So again, if this is not appropriate for you, then just keep the left hand on the thigh and tilt your head to the left as you walk your right fingertips away. And if your fingertips don't touch the floor, no worries. Just point the fingertips down and away from you. Nice long line through that arm from the fingertips, from the neck, from the ear, all the way down into the fingertips. Okay, from there, you're going to take that right hand now, bring the back of the hand against your sacrum, and at the base of the spine there, and just gently press the back of the hand into the sacrum as you breathe into that length along the right side. The neck, down into the shoulders, as you feel it down into your arm. From here, if it's available, you can start to slide that right hand towards the left, like you want to hook it into your back left pocket or maybe even to your front left pocket, bringing your right elbow in closer towards the torso. And finally, if your elbow is right up against the torso there and it's available, you can slide that back hand maybe up towards the spine. Make sure you're breathing. Soft through your mouth and eyes. And then we're going to release the right hand back onto the floor. Walk it away. Get that nice long line again. Breathe into that. And then when you're ready, take your left hand or your right hand off the head. Bring it to the, uh, no, sorry, your left hand to the left side of your face and help your head up. Sorry. I marry you guys and sometimes I get myself confused. Okay. And then again, big shoulder circle. All right. From here, let's make fists with our hands, and we're going to circle out our wrists, and we'll circle them the other way, and then we interlace the fingers, and we make those figure eights. So, as always, try to keep the elbows, not, not the movements not in the elbows, keep the elbows nice and quiet, and you're just moving through the wrists. So, drawing figure eights with the wrists, and then take it in the other direction. And then take a moment, look at your hands, and just change the clasp, other thumb on top. And again, figure eight the wrists. And take it in the other direction. And then from there, we're just going to shake out our hands. Again, interlace your fingers with a normal clasp. And now press your palms away from you. So back of the hand is facing you. And you're just pressing out shoulder height. Shrug your shoulder blades down the back body. And press out through the index finger mount, so index finger mount, a little bit faster than the pinky, almost like you want to pull the pinky side of the hand back towards you. The eyes of the elbows are facing in towards each other, and then here, can you, as best you can, straighten your elbows without locking them. And just like you're hugging your elbows in towards each other a little bit. And then you're going to maintain that, shrug your shoulder blades down the back, ground down through your sit bones, and with your next inhale, you're going to start to take your arms up overhead. And then grounding down through your sit bones, press your palms up, but keep the shoulder blades down the back. Breathe in here. If it's appropriate and you can take a little tilt to the side, we're going to side bend to the left. Bring it back up through center and exhaling, side bend it to the right. Back up through center and exhale, release. Big shoulder circle. And now let's interlace our fingers, other thumb on top. And again, press your palms away from you. Back of the hand facing you and press out through the index finger mound a little bit faster than the pinky side of the hand. So again, like you're pulling the pinky side of the hand back in towards you a little bit. Eyes of the elbows facing in. Shrug those shoulder blades down the back body, ground down through the sit bone. And then just hugging those elbows in towards each other a little bit. Your core is nicely engaged, navel gently in and up. You're going to ground down through your sit bones. As you inhale, press your arms up overhead again. And again, grounding down to lengthen up, but keep those shoulder blades sliding away from the ears. So not like this, but keep the shoulder blades sliding down the back as you press your palms up from grounding down through the sit bones, pressing up. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, we're going to tip it to the right. And back up through center, and exhale, tip it to the left. Back up through center, and again, exhale, release. Good. Big shoulder circle. 
All right, and let's just shake out our hands, shake out our elbows, and shake out our shoulders. Here, we're gonna use a strap. So let's, um, so you can stay seated, you can change the crossing of your legs, or if you want to uh, stretch out your soles of the feet, you can actually come onto your knees and curl your toes under and sit onto the heels. That's pretty intense. It's a good stretch for the soles of the feet. We're not working on the feet today, but I'm just uh, giving that as an option. So if that's really intense, but you want to try it, you can also bring your sit bones a little bit higher by putting like some cushions between the heel and the butt, um, some folded blankets or something, and it'll be a little less, less intense. But if you're like like here trying to hold that, then maybe uh, you can also come into this uh, on your knees just with the tops of the feet down on the floor and sit on your heels or sit on something. So those are some different options for different um, uh, postures for your legs if you want to switch it up, okay? So we're focusing on the upper body. So just take a position that works for you. Or if you'd rather come up standing, you can come up to standing too. But I'm going to stay on my knees here as I demo this. So we're going to take a strap. So again, if you don't have a yoga strap, no worries. You can use a belt that you wear around your waist. You can use a dog leash or anything that kind of has um, some length in it that helps you um, extend uh, and that you can pull against. All right. So we're going to, I like to hold the buckle of the strap in one hand just so it's not flailing around and, and banging me. And then you're going to take some distance between the hands. And you're bringing your hands up to shoulder height. And I've got maybe a couple of feet here. I'm a pretty small person, so I've got a couple of feet here. And that feels pretty good. And then start to pull your hands away from each other on the strap. Shrug your shoulder blades down the body again. So shoulder blades moving away from the ears, navel gently in and up. I'm pulling my hands away from the strap. And that's as you pull your hands away from the strap, you'll feel these muscles on the sides here sort of engage. So you want to maintain that. Keep your elbows straight without locking them, just nice and straight. And then you're going to inhale to start to take your arms up overhead. Keep pulling the hands away from each other on the strap as you take your arms up overhead. Shoulder blades down. And breathe here. Keep pulling the hands away from each other. And maybe you can take the arms back another inch. And again, shoulder blades down. Elbows working towards straight without locking. Breathing. And take it back another inch. Breathe. Good. And then as you exhale, bring those hands forward and down. Big shoulder circle. And now we're coming into it again. So bring your hands up shoulder height. Pull the hands away from me. So you'll, you'll notice, like if your hands are too wide, like too much room, you know, you're going to be hitting your forehead. That's <laughs> uh, not so great. And if it's too narrow, it's hard to get your arms up. So you just want to take a comfortable distance, right? And then pull the hands away from each other. Uh, shoulder blades down, navel gently in and up. Nice tall spine. And again, when you're ready, we're going to inhale. Keep pulling your hands away from each other. Elbows are working to stay nice and straight without locking as you take your arms up overhead. Pull the hands away from each other, shoulder blades down. So again, not this. So if you're doing this, then bring it down, shoulder blades down. And maybe you're not taking your arms up quite as high to keep your shoulder blades moving down the back. Pull the hands away from each other. And then little by little, you work to bring your hands up or back another inch or two. So just breathe into it. Mm -hmm. If you get tired, you can always come out. You don't have to stay at my pace. Okay. If you're still with me, take your hands back another inch. Breathe. And then let's exhale, bring the whole thing down. All right. Shoulder shrug. Big shoulder circle. All right. We're going to come into that one more time. So, and then we're going to floss our shoulders. I know some of you have done this with me before. So, again, you're going to take some distance. You're going to pull the hands away from each other on that strap. Engage those lats on the sides. Okay? And then when you're ready, navel gently in and up. We're going to inhale, take our arms up. Again, shoulder blades down. Working towards keeping your elbows straight. So here, take a moment to just feel your spine from the 
from the crown of the head to the tip of the tail. Nice long line, as if there's a rod, and you want to keep it nice and tall and straight. So we're just, and you're going to keep your elbows straight, so not bending the elbows, as you start to take your arms over to one side together. So it's not this, I'm not side bending, and I'm also not doing this, I'm not bending the top elbow. I'm keeping my spine nice and tall, keeping my arms nice and straight, and I'm just gonna slide it over to one side, to whatever degree I can. And if your arms are behind your head, all the better, you can slide it behind the head. And then back up through center and over to the other side. So again, you're working to keep your spine nice and tall, keep those elbows nice and straight, and then back to center. So we're just kind of like flossing our shoulder blades. <laughs> okay. Back up through center and back to the second side one more time. Good. Bring the whole thing back up and let's release it all the way down. All right. And shake it out. Okay. From here, let's just come up to standing. So we'll do, uh, we'll just come up onto our feet for a moment. So let me adjust my um, uh, camera. Whew. That was quite the thing on my feet with my toes curled under. Okay, so let's take a moment to find ourselves on our feet. So take a moment and just look at your feet when you're just standing, you know, if you just find a standing uh, natural stance. And notice what pattern, like I always have the pattern, my right foot creeps a little bit more forward than my left. Some people, maybe one foot turns out or turns in or, you know, whatever it is. We all have different patterns that the body holds. So just becoming beginning to observe what's your body's pattern, habit pattern of holding, and just noticing. And then let's go ahead and come into Tadasana, mountain pose. So bring your feet about hip width apart and see if you can get your feet parallel. So parallel means like from the center of the index toe to the center of the heel, those lines are parallel. Sometimes people also use the outer edges of the feet to be parallel. But more or less, you know, something like that. So the ten toes are all pointing forward, and they're, like, um, oriented. They're parallel, you know, not one foot turned in or out more than the other. And just see how does that feel in your body. Does that feel natural? Does it feel weird? You know, we're just bringing awareness into our uh, observing. All right. And then from here, let's take a moment. Even though we're not focusing on the feet today, we always take a moment to ground into our foundation. So let's ground the ball of the big toe and inner heel into the floor and then spread the soles of the feet to ground the outer two points as well. So four corners of the feet rooted, lifting those inner arches, inner ankles, inner knees, inner thighs roll back. Lengthen your tailbone down, hug your navel gently in and up, and then shrug your shoulders forward, up, back and down. Grounding down through our feet, we'll inhale, sweep our arms out and up overhead. And now as you exhale, bend your knees, bring your hands onto your thighs, sit your booty back a little bit. Inhale, press into your thighs to lengthen the front of the spine. Shoulder blades move away from the ears, back of the neck long. And then exhaling, bend your knees for a gentle fold. So you don't need to fold all the way. And again, halfway lift, Lengthen the front body. Exhaling, bend the knees a little bit more. So if balance is kind of um, questionable, you can always have a chair. I should have said so earlier. You can have a chair. It doesn't need to be a yoga chair, just any kind of furniture that's stable, that's not gonna move. You can use, put your hands on that and then you can lift and then fold here, right? And you bend your knees as much as you need to protect your back, especially since we haven't done much Warm up in the legs and back and hamstring today. Okay, so halfway lift on the inhale, folding on the exhale. And one more time, halfway lift as you inhale, fold as you exhale. Ground into your feet, press down to rise all the way up. Sweep your arms out and up overhead. Palms touch at the top. And exhale, hands to the heart. And my dog, Ume, decided to join us. <laughs> Okay, we'll do that again. So release your hands, ground down. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up. Palms touch at the top. As you exhale, let's swan dive. Hands to your thighs, or maybe they can come down to your shins. Lift that heart up halfway, shoulder blades away from your ears. Nice long spine. Exhaling, forward fold. 
Ground down through your feet, press down to rise, inhale, sweep it all the way back up. And one more time, exhaling, dive. Lift that heart up halfway and fold. Press down to rise, just bring it all the way up, inhaling. And palms together at the heart. And then just release your hands, take a moment and just feel the effects. It doesn't take much to get the energy moving. Just notice how that feels. Okay. And then I did want to do a little bit of breath work today before we go into Shavasana. So you can have a seated position. You know, if you've got a chair, you're welcome to sit on a chair just with your feet stacked underneath your knees. Uh, or if you're sitting on the floor, then do make sure that you have some good support. So sit up on a little bit of lift, maybe a little bit higher than you think you need. And then maybe have something there for your knees so that your knees are supported. And again, you want to rock yourself towards the front of whether you're sitting in a chair or on the floor, rock yourself to the front edge of your sit bones, ground down in order to lengthen up nice and tall through the spine. So getting that nice uh, seated posture. And then we're going to work with Nadi Shodhana today, alternate nostril breathing. So I'll come a little bit closer, actually. So you guys can see me. Okay. So make sure you're in a comfortable seat, whatever that means for you. And then alternate nostril breathing is said to help balance the right and the left hemisphere. So um, uh, some different hand position options. So some people like to put their peace finger. I'm going to demo with my right hand and I'm not going to mirror you guys for this. So some people like to put their two peace fingers on their third eye. And basically you use the thumb that's going to close off the right nostril and then uh, the tip of the ring finger that closes off the left nostril, okay? And it alternates. And then, so some hand position, people can just do this and you do this. Some people like to curl these two fingers in and then they do it like this. And I was actually taught to wrap my ring finger over my pinky finger and then I curl the piece fingers in. So that's how I do it. It doesn't matter so much, use what works for you. But the important thing is to keep your spine nice and tall, right? So just like we did earlier with the shoulder stretch, you want to keep your spine nice and tall because when people start doing this, sometimes they start to crunch in and they start to turn towards that armpit. So try to avoid that. Keep yourself nice and tall, shoulder blades down. And then as if you're holding like a, an egg in your armpit and you don't want to squeeze it, you don't want to crack the egg and get yolk all over you, that would be gross. So nice. Keep it little spacious, shoulder blades down. And then we're going to take a normal inhale in through both nostrils. And then you're going to use your thumb to gently close off your right nostril and exhale out through your left. And then you're going to inhale through that left nostril. You're going to close both nostrils for just a beat and then open up your right nostril to exhale out through the right. Inhale in through the right. And again, close both and exhale out through the left. Inhale in through the left. Closing both and exhale out through the right. Inhale right. Close both. Exhale left. So continue like that with your own rhythm. But basically, you're exhaling out from one side first, and then you inhale in through that same side before you switch sides. Then you go to the other side, and again, you exhale first completely, and then you inhale in on that same side before you switch. Keep it easy. Soften the muscles of your face. Relax the mouth, the jaw, the tongue, the eyes. Again, keep your spine nice and tall. Shoulder blades down. Keep that little egg nice and secure without, without uh, crushing it in that armpit. Keep your gaze nice and soft. Just a few more rounds. So this is a great thing to do. It's very calming, balancing. So continue with the cycle you're on. And the next time you exhale out through the left nostril, 
Then you'll release the hands and inhale in through both. So take your time, no rush. But the next time you exhale out through the left nostril, then release the hands and just come back to your natural breath. Just sit for a moment in your natural breath. Maybe your eyes closed if you can. Just notice the effects. Notice how subtle your natural breath is. Feel the breath as it moves in and out. quiet your mind might be now. Good. And then still seated with your eyes closed, let's bring the palms together in front of the heart center again. Feel your thumbs gently press against your sternum, shoulder blades down the back body. Again, take a beat to reconnect in with your intention or your dedication. Just reconnecting in with the heart center, the seat of your inner wisdom, take a nice breath in, paw it out, and bow the head to the heart. Okay, and I'm going to turn things back over to Katie now. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Kat, for another great demonstration. So I'm going to share my screen so you can see the book that I chose. <clears throat> All right. Well, this week's theme is air, which is characterized by movement, expansion, and communication. I've selected When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi to share with you. Kalanithi was a Stanford neurosurgeon and writer. Sadly, he passed of lung cancer in 2015 at the age of 37. His writings for Stanford Medicine and the New York Times were about facing mortality after being diagnosed. When Breath Becomes Air is Kalanithi's memoir of his battle with can cancer. In the opening paragraph, neurosurgical resident Paul Kalanithi is reviewing CT scan images, noting tumors in the lungs and obvious signs of cancer throughout the body. He says, the scan was different. It was my own. And with that, the future I had imagined, the one just about to be realized, the culmination of decades of striving evaporated. Kalanithi grew up surrounded by doctors in his family, though he never thought he would be one. He was accepted to Stanford with the intent to focus on literature. Then, inspired by the great books he read growing up, he says, literature provided a rich account of human meaning. The brain, then, was a machinery that somehow enabled it. So, he signed up for biology and neuroscience classes as well. Throughout his studies, he was driven to understand what makes human life meaningful and the life of a mind. He begins his studies in literature, philosophy, and neuroscience first at Stanford, then at Cambridge. Ultimately, his journey led him to medicine. He reflects on cutting into his first cadaver while in Yale Medical School, noting how they were invading the body and trespassing into something sacred with every slice. He and his classmates would often apologize to the cadavers after dissecting them. Among his classmates, Kalanithi meets his future wife, Lucy Goddard. He shares, medical school sharpened my understanding of the relationship between meaning, life, and death. The second half of the memoir is about Kalanithi's attempt to find meaning after his cancer diagnosis is confirmed. His immediate thought among seen, seeing the CT scans is, I don't want to die. He says, death, so familiar to me in my work, was now paying me a personal visit. In the midst of his grappling with mortality, he and his wife decide to have a baby. He says, I had to face my mortality and try to understand what made my life worth living. Kalanithi is started on medical or on daily medication and the cancer stabilizes, so he opts to return to surgery. He nearly passes out on his first day back in the OR. He said he had to figure out what was the most important thing to him, being a neurosurgeon, a father, a teacher. He couldn't do it all, and he didn't know how long he had to live. Soon, the tumors grew, and he started chemotherapy. As his health declined, Lucy went into labor. Kalanithi had one message for his new daughter, Katie, that she filled a dying man's days with a joy unknown to him, and he can rest satisfied. Katie was eight, month, eight months old when Kalanithi passed in March 2015. In the epilogue, Lucy Goddard Kalanithi 
recounts her husband's final months. They were inseparable throughout his treatments. One night, she asked him if he could breathe comfortably with her on his chest. He replied, it's the only way I know how to breathe. When Breath Becomes Air is available in audio, ebook, and physical formats in the library collection, so you can check it out for yourself. Thank you again for joining us for Reach and Read, and a big thank you to Kat for another great demonstration. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday, May 11th at 10 a.m., so we hope to see you then. So to find a library location near you, sign up for a library card, or to learn about upcoming programs for all ages, just go to www.saclibrary.org. So for Kat, myself, and the Sacramento Public Library, thank you so much, and be well. Bye!